Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a play review of Spooky Chase for the Nintendo Switch. Now Spooky Chase just came out on the eShop a couple of weeks ago and it's an uber budget title. Its normal sale price is about $5 and basically right now as of filming of this video there's actually a sale going on for 50% off so you can actually pick it up for $2.50. Now, uh, for some odd reason as well, if you do have a Canadian eShop account, this almost never happens, but this game in Canada, its regular price is actually $2.50, and right now the same 50% sale is going on, and you can actually pick it up for only $1.25. So, don't forget that as we're going through this review, it's always based on the fact that this is an uber budget title. Now, this will not be a very long review because, I'll be honest with you, the game the basic premise of the game is very, very simple, but at the same time, it is extremely fun and I found to be extremely addictive. So we'll go through a few of the stages of the game so you can get a general idea of how the game plays out and if this is something you're going to want to pick up. Now, as we get started on the review itself, I'm going to mention that I did not finish this game. Normally, I only try to review games once I finish them, but because of the nature of this game, you can get a full idea of whether this game is for you or not pretty much I would say in the first like 15 or 20 minutes of playing the game. And even today, like this is going to be like an under 10 minute video and you're going to get a pretty good idea of whether this game is for you or not. And the main reason I'm not waiting to finish the game is number one, if you want to pick this up, I want to make sure you can take advantage of the 50% off sale. And number two, because there are so many big games coming out in the next week or two, I knew I would not really have time to get to this game and played enough to actually finish it. And since I think I can do a decent review of it nonetheless, uh, well, I'm going to be doing it right now where I'm at, which is about like five or six stages in. Now, basically you have two modes. You can play an endless mode, which is the, going to be the basic game mode nonstop in one stage. However, what I found more interesting is the campaign mode. And we'll go take a look at it right now. Now, by the way, also, I'm not sure what's up with all these Halloween games coming out at the beginning of 2021, but pretty much every month we're getting a new Halloween themed game and they're actually turning out to be pretty decent at the same time. So the basic premise of the game is that it's a mix between an auto runner and a basically a platformer. And if we go into the first stage, you're going to see how the game plays out. Basically, it's as simple. It's that you your position will be randomly generated and all you have to do is get to the, the flag. Okay, and you basically just have a jump button. As soon as you press a direction, your character will auto run. You can change directions at any time, but you can never stop your momentum once you get started. And basically, as you see, every time you pick up a new flag, whatever path you took, you're going to have a ghost the next time you're trying to pick up the next flag, and he's going to be like your opponent. And basically what you have to do is you have to manage to get to the flag without ever, without ever coming into contact with one of your copies. When I say you don't have to come in contact, you can contact them, but it's basically Mario Brothers rules. If you contact them, you have to be jumping on their head, anything else, and you will die. And basically, the point is, you have to get through all the flags, and basically, you finish the level. Now, I, I started the basic first level just to show you that it's actually very easy to finish the level. There's also a hidden secret balloon that you can catch on the last flag. If you touch that balloon, it'll give you access to secret areas. So basically, I already got the first secret balloon, and what's really fun about these secret areas is it flips the gameplay around a bit. Like, this is basically an auto-running level where you all have to go in the same direction. So I'll show you guys this one next, just so you get an idea that although the gameplay is pretty simple, they do flip the special stages on their heads, and you have, like, a different style of gameplay. So basically, this is an auto-runner where you basically have to complete the stage almost perfectly, or you're going to get hit, basically, by the car that is chasing you. Now, if you hold down the Y button, you do sprint quicker, and this is an ability you generally always have. So basically, now the idea is that we have to sprint through the level, trying to complete it perfectly by collecting all the watches to make sure that we don't run out of time. And now I just failed the stage because I missed the jump. So basically, time's going to run out. I die. Let's try it again. So basically, this time I'm going to be trying a little harder. We are going to focus two seconds, and we're going to get through the stage. Basically, all these candies that you're collecting, by the way, they will unlock special costumes. The costumes are just visual upgrades to the game, so it's really nothing special other than having awesome costumes so that you don't always look the same. And basically, that's it. 
we just got through the stage. So it's, it's fun nonetheless because you get this sort of flipping on its head auto running stages and it gives you a chance to collect a ton, ton of candies. And when I say that you unlock costumes, there are a ton of costumes to unlock. And just by naturally going through the stages, even if you're failing them, you still get to keep the candies that you pick up. So if we go take a look at the costumes so far that I've picked up, as you can see, there's a ton to pick up. So I've already gotten almost a third of the costumes and I've only been playing like about five or six stages, but nonetheless, it is a fun motivation to keep trying to get those candies. And as you can see right now, I'm using the ninja upgrade. You have like a street fighter karate type upgrade. Um, they're all just fun things. There's even one that looks like South Park that basically looks like Cartman. Now, if we go a little further, I'll show you one of the tougher stages and you'll get an idea of why I said I don't won't have time to finish this game it's that some of the tougher stages I'll be honest with you that was a five flag stage this is going to be a 10 flag stage you're going to see how crazy and zany it gets by the way each time you fail it your position and the flags position is randomly generated so you cannot learn by heart where the flags are and the stages do get crazier as you go along with basically pitfalls now so, so far, it seems pretty easy. We're starting out standard, and you see already there I died because my character basically popped up right under me. So, first flag, as you see, this time they're not positioned the same way they were earlier. So, now, now it's going to be getting a little spicy because we're going to have competing versions of ourselves. Now, we're going to have to do a little flip around here, get the third flag. Now, we're only at four characters and already I messed it up. Now, as you can see, the game gets pretty challenging. You sort of have to learn the levels by heart. Um, let's just go look at another level. This is pretty much gonna be the last one we're gonna look at, just because at this point, it's gonna give you a general idea of how the gameplay works. We're gonna try a, a 10 flag level, but one that I know and that is a little simpler, just so you get an idea of all the zany action. Perfect. So here we are at pretty much like the second or third level that you're going to get to in the game. And you don't actually have to complete all 10 flags on the levels. We'll go look at that in a second, but basically to progress through the levels, you just have to collect a certain number of flags. So basically we're gonna try and take the shortest route here so that we don't have to come in contact with our ghosts. So now we're at four flags. We'll see if we can get at least five. We've got five, but already now you're seeing it's getting pretty packed and there. So you basically have to always keep track of where you pass before to try to take different routes in each one of your playthroughs. But honestly, it seems super simple, but the gameplay is top notch. Number one, the controls are hyper responsive. The gameplay is fun and addictive. It's super easy to pick up. And as I said, if you want to just progress through the game, you don't actually have to finish each stage because the way it works is that basically if we go back to the central map, you'll have a certain number of flags that you have to have collected in the previous stages to get access to the next stage. If you can see, I have currently 29 flags there at the top. I need 40 to get to the next stage. And there are three stages among this. So if we do the calculation, I only need about three or four flags per stage to be actually able to unlock the next level. However, if you want 100% this game, this is gonna take hours and hours of gameplay, and you're also gonna have to get lucky sometimes in the placement of the flags. Because I won't hide that this game, basically since your position and the flag's position is randomly generated, that has a lot to do whether or not you're going to be able to catch the flags easily or not. So basically, that is pretty much it for what I wanted to show you about this new game, Spooky Chase. I do find that for a budget title, it's a simple concept, but it works super well. And honestly, if I had a dollar 25 or two bucks to drop on a game and a game that I could, I know I could sink a few hours here and there in between playing more bigger, difficult games. This is a definite game that I can see myself playing like a couple of games here and there every night before bed, just before we, you know, trying to progress slowly and slowly through the levels. 
So basically, as normal, I'm going to give a rating to the game. I don't give a score out of 10. I give a general statement on whether I think the game is a decent purchase or not. It's always related to the price it's been sold at as well. So if you're new to the channel, you can always check out down below. I'll have a full listing of what the different statements I use are. And in my, this case, I will be giving Haunted Castle a solid game, but it's a very high solid game. It was almost a definite pickup, only that I do think that this gameplay style will not maybe fit perfectly with everyone. But if you're into these simple platformer auto runners that resemble solder of puzzle stages, this is a definite game you're going to want to pick up, especially at the price it's being sold for. Now, the last thing before we go, as usual, don't forget that if you like these videos, you want to see more, best way to help support the channel is to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my new videos come out. But as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.